Dr. Paul Lamb, a family physician and Tai Chi expert, is a world leader in the field of Tai Chi for health improvement. Dr. Lamb and his medical and Tai Chi colleagues have created a series of Tai Chi for Health programs shown by medical studies to improve health and quality of life. His Tai Chi programs have impacted over 2 million people worldwide. Thanks Dr. Guy for inviting me to talk about my favorite topic. I'm going to talk about what is Tai Chi and what makes a good or ideal Tai Chi for Health programs. And I'll give you a sample and a sample program which Dr. Uh, Dr. Guy just mentioned. And then we'll have a try of it. There are many types of Tai Chi that's significantly different from each other. So I'm going to start just show you three major styles. The original style is called chain style. There will be fast punches and there will be jumping up and kicks and you can just imagine that is not so that suitable for older people. In fact it's not so suitable for most people. It's very different from the most popular style you see in the media or you practice yourself. It's called Yang style. It is slow and it is gentle and very graceful. And I also like to show you uh, the, the youngest style, which is Sang style. We pronounce it as Sung style. And I tell my people with arthritis, Sung your arthritis should get better if you do the Sun style. <laughs> and it it's, uh, looks very simple. And you can see the stance are much higher. And people pick it up very easily. But it has a lot of depth and you have unique Qigong and have very effective healing property. There's many more Tai Chi styles, but I just want to tell you there are many different kinds of Tai Chi and they can look really different and it can be really different in physical exertions. And that makes scientific study very difficult. You do a study for a Yang style and because even within the same style, everybody do it differently. So how do you translate that result? to the wider community. So I broadly classify Tai Chi into three categories. Martial art, competition, and health. When I look back at the origin of Tai Chi, when I trace back the, the writings, the classics, and uh, I have a very strong feeling that Tai Chi was created not just for martial arts. It's created to help us to balance, to make us a better person and make us interact with the universe, with other people in a more harmonious state. Tai Chi is about nature, about us. Martial art, I think it was mostly used for martial art because in those days, probably the best way to market it. You know, it doesn't work, let me show you. Bang, throw it out. So that comes with the fact that it takes a lot of training. They talk about training for three years full time. Then you learn the first routine of chain style. In another word, three years full time and he worked really hard, he got the primary level and he trained for 10 years then you can hope to be a teacher. <laughs> now, can you see that that is not going to be very accessible to bring Tai Chi to the wider public. And of course, you can see my jumps and um, I do it very carefully but you can see that has much higher risk of injury. Then we go to the competition. In recent years, 
Tai Chi is being in competition. And it's a good thing, bring people's awareness to Tai Chi. But you want to know the difference. In competition, they care about how high you kick. You know, a lot of judges in a major competition don't know Tai Chi. It's amazing, but that's another story. When I was training in Beijing Institute of Physical Education, um, I still see the way the kids train. It's so dangerous. They jump down from, from quite high to very thin carpet. So I asked the professors, what about injury prevention? Oh, they say, look, we've got plenty of people in China, lots of talent. So what happened? They hurt themselves. Or they go back to the fields and to the factories. Yeah, that's not a good model for health. <laughs> yeah. So, so why Tai Chi for Health programs? Apart from what I mentioned, is the purpose. Traditional training, traditional Tai Chi were really good for traditional reasons, for martial arts. But the purpose change, the society change. We want Tai Chi for health. 99% of people I met doing Tai Chi for health. So with the purpose change, it's natural that we need to change the methodology. And then we have so much development in medicine, in the teaching. People often overlook the importance of proper teaching. And Terry mentioned something about input from the experts. That's a really important point. I agree totally. And uh, so teaching and got working with experts is really, really important. And those knowledge, the new technology, the medical knowledge, the teaching knowledge, help us to help people to learn Tai Chi quicker. And that's what we need for health. We want to learn something quickly and get benefit quickly. And then of course it needs to be enjoyable. If you have to train 10 years full time and, and work really, really hard, you're not going to get many people who's willing to do that. So you have very poor adherence. Also the way it's trained, the, the traditional training don't care about your feeling. They're very much, when I say tradition, I don't mean whoever been teaching a long time ago got to be traditional. I just mean the general train of traditional teaching. They don't really care about the learner. The teacher teach it the teacher's way. And Rayon has uh, shared with me a very valuable experience. And she said the, the inexperienced teacher teach what they know but the experienced teacher teach what the learners need in the learner's way. And that is what the modern knowledge is leading us to. So when the learner learn it their way and they find they can learn quickly, they would adhere to the program. So those three are important reasons why we need a specially designed program. So I make a thing to suggest that an ideal Tai Chi for Health program is an accessible program that incorporates Tai Chi principles and up-to-date knowledge. So that translates to three points. One, we want it to be easy. Two, we want it to be effective. And three, we want it to be safe. And let me just explain each point. Being easy will make it accessible. Again, if you're going to invest money for public health, if you're going to invest our time and energy for health, we don't want to spend 10 years to get it. We want to get it now. And I come back to a study Dr. Callahan presented in last year's rheumatology conference to about 8,000 people. She has uh, studied 354 people, and I'll, I'll bring it back later. In eight weeks, she was able to measure significant improvements. 
I'll, I'll bring it back. So that's the kind of things you want to see. Easy, accessible, good results, better return for your time and cost. And we want people to enjoy it. If they don't enjoy it, they're not coming back. They're not going to do it. And that's the major problem for any exercise. People don't adhere to exercise. We want to make it enjoyable, fulfilling, so that they come back. If no one comes back to a program, it doesn't matter how perfect it is, it's not going to work. So the next one is being effective. That's obvious. It has to work. Otherwise, um, so how does it work? I think the mo number one most important reason is Tai Chi principle. And I'm going to come back to it. And I'm going to just let us experiment a little bit. Tai Chi principle is, is really what makes Tai Chi effective. When you take a careful look at studies, I think you will find the Tai Chi program that able to teach and the subject able to learn a Tai Chi form, no matter what form, what style, with Tai Chi principles, then they will get the benefit. In order to incorporate the Tai Chi principle into the student, we need to teach it effectively. And then it would be really good to have studies to evaluate, validate it. And yesterday we talked about studies. And I, I agree that the outcome measurement for Tai Chi studies has so far following an older model, a model of psychopharmacological pattern. How do you do a double blind control trial for Tai Chi? Everybody knows what's Tai Chi. So, and, and what we're looking for is not just less pain, better function, well that's wonderful and that's been shown. But we want to show how the, the spirit part of you affect all parts of people's life. So in a way it would be good if we can devise outcome that is consistent to Tai Chi criteria. So let's just start to tell you that one of the outcomes, happy people in New Zealand. I'll come back to New Zealand. Um, that's a nice group of people. This is in Singapore. We are, um, that's a pointer here. Those two men here, they haven't done Tai Chi before, but they are the CEO of the People's Association in Singapore. People's Association is a government department. They're amazing. They, they, they just run people's life. But, <laughs> but one of the things I really love about People's Association in Singapore, the majority of people have government housing and they are, they are normal apartments and they are well playing. So there's always a community centre. In the community centre, you always see activities. You see older, younger, middle-aged, everybody was there. There is food, there's shops, and there's exercise center, there's a, a community center that's always booked. There's badminton, I saw belly dancing, and I run Tai Chi workshop there. And I see you know, people just sit there, and the older people have a cup of coffee, talk to each other. It's life. There's real life there. Now this is what we need in the Western world. Singapore is sort of westernized, and I think the community center just just the model that we need to learn. Our people get too lonely. We need to mix, not just the older people, but all ages. Anyway, this is a headquarter in PA, and those two men, one is just retiring CEO, and one is an upcoming CEO. And this is my friend and our master trainer, uh, Professor. Raymond Lau. He's uh, a professor, associate professor in Singapore University 
and somebody, one of the ladies down there, this lady here decided, let's have a get together and get people to learn Tai Chi from Dr. Lam. So in a few weeks, they found 2,000 people who gathered just behind <laughs> us. It was really <laughs> adherence. People do like easy to learn programs. So um, this is um, the studies. This study is uh, funded by New South Wales Health Department. It's published in the Journal of American Geriatric Society. And I won't go into all these big details, but it is the world largest force prevention study in the community, which I think is really important, real life. And they have 702 subjects, which make it the largest study. And they found that the recurring falls, these are the older people, and um, the major problem for older people is not just a single fall, it's a recurring fall. They found a 70% reduction, which is the immense achievement. It's consistent with other fall studies. And 76% of those subjects use Tai Chi for arthritis which is a sample program I'm going to come back to. So the next study, early on, I mentioned that Dr. Callahan presented. This is from America, North Carolina University, North Carolina. And it is uh, presented in the rheumatology conference last year. And she has 350 four patients. And she say, this is a quote from her words, our study shows that there are significant benefits of the Tai Chi course for individuals with all types of arthritis, including osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and fibromyalgia. And they only did eight weeks. I was very worried. Eight weeks two lessons a week, Tai Chi for arthritis. The same program that I showed you early on. And the main four things they found is people have significant pain relief. They feel good about themselves. And they have better balance and also less fatigue, which, which is consistent with Terry's study. When people feel better, everything gets better. Eight weeks is a short time and that's really nice. So the, the last bit is obvious, it's safe. Of course you want saving. Yesterday we talked about uh, the potential side effect of exercise. We all talk about yoga. Uh, but I'm just focused on Tai Chi here. Anyone can see that the jumping and the kicking have higher risk of injury. But you might not see that when you do a yang style and when people turn and do a parting white horse's mane, it doesn't look dangerous to you, does it? When your weight's on that knee and you turn without shifting weight, can you feel there's a shielding force on that cartilage? Yeah, and, and that's high risk. Now, people don't think it's high risk. It's nothing, it's just staying here. And the common practice for most many Tai Chi school is called Zhang Zhuang. They stay there, and lots of Qigong practice have that too. They stay there for a period of time. People say the longer the better. Five minutes, half an hour, and you start shaking. It's quite strenuous, and it's, it's high risk for people with arthritis. I know, I have arthritis since my early teens. And my friends who didn't have arthritis, now have arthritis, and I, I'm much fitter and, and healthier than them, even though it's not cure, but it's really well controlled. But I wouldn't do zhuang zhuang, because it's put a lot of strain on those knees. Yeah, and if you have diabetes or you have heart conditions, it increases your heart rate, it gives you a lot of stress. So harmless things 
can have high risk. So we want to remove that. We all also want to use medical knowledge, not just for injury prevention, but find using modern knowledge to use the movement that is more effective for health. The knowledge is there, we should use it. And the teachers are very important. You might not realize that, but there is no traditional standard for teaching and they don't really care that much about safety even though a lot of teachers are very kind-hearted but they don't understand they don't understand that if you get students to hold a posture and go around and correct their posture that's a lot of Tai Chi people, teachers do that that doesn't sound harmful to you, does it? but it's high risk you know, the guy's holding on with arthritis and he wait a minute, two minutes, he gets stiff and the joints got in, uh, irritated. So there are a lot of people with conditions they don't even know. See, you want to have a safer, you've got a safer alternative, you should use it. And you still get the same benefit, if not better. So i like to present to you Tai Chi for Arthritis. I created it 13, 14 years ago with a rheumatology professor and I thought professors are very academic so my excuse to all the professors here. <laughs> so I also went, went to outside a consulting rheumatologist he's sort of more to the world and then I have a physiotherapist, I have a group of Tai Chi people we got together and we spent about half to one year and we, we create this program, we give it to people to try and after they tried it we did a video and then we give it to some people who doesn't know any Tai Chi at all and we say okay here's the video, go learn it and they learn it and they give us some feedback and we thought, well, this is working well. So after a meeting, working, it took us over a year before we create and compose a program. Uh, so even though Tai Chi for arthritis look very simple, a simple things should not come easily. It should come with a lot of thoughts. Also, so it is very easy. There's 12 movements and we do it both sides and as you can see Dr. Callahan's subject learn it in 8 weeks but you need to learn it quicker than 8 weeks because for the outcome, the, the effect to come you need to have learned it and practice it so usually we found that 12 lessons, 1 hour a lesson so that would be if you had two hour lessons a week it gives you um, six weeks and then another two weeks of practice so that's pretty easy for Tai Chi much easier than ten years full time training <coughs> and it's effective we have now close to twenty studies and I'm, we're so fortunate to have authors of some of the studies um, Wei Yong and uh, Moon He has done studies on Tai Chi for arthritis and also Samuel you done Tai Chi for arthritis for Parkinson's yeah and I have uh, done a few studies and Dr. Carla Haynes the other study by uh, New South Wales Health Department study by New Zealand U University, Otago University was commissioned by the New Zealand government so there's a lot of study done on that program but the fact that I guess I just meet so many people um, it's overwhelming how effective something that's so simple and it is safe in our studies we also um, look at the safety issue and so far we have really good safety records so that's one of the these people 
have to sit and practice because we have adaptation for people in any conditions. And um, this is my friend. I think this is, is this Terry Ho? Yeah, this is Terry Ho. <laughs> Four years ago. So I, I just come back to the Tai Chi principle. I, I promise you that I'll talk about Tai Chi principle because I think that's what makes Tai Chi work. And I classify that into three different broad categories. Starting from outside to inside. The first part is the movement. The Tai Chi movements, anyone look at Tai Chi, they can tell it's Tai Chi because Tai Chi moves slowly, smoothly, and it moves as though there's a resistance on what it's doing. So when it moves slowly, if you think about that, that allows people's mind to be more focused. In other words, it, it allows the mind body to be connected. And when people move slowly, then it's easier for them to calm down. In a way, it facilitates a form of meditative state. When people move smoothly, likewise, if you move smoothly, and I'll get you to join me in a minute, see if you can get stress. If, if focus on moving smoothly, it's much more easy to relax. And when you move continuously in the Tai Chi world, we think that help you to generate the internal energy. But the continuation is a good way to train your mind to stay focused. Stay here, continuous, don't stop. Moving against resistance is good strength training without side effect of any injury because you're not really lifting something. You started from inside. So I, I'd like you to join me and try um, a movement control. We're going to just sit down and do some movements. Um, and then we'll, we can stand up to do the next bit. So I'd like you to first get yourself straight. So sit forward a little bit, put your foot on the ground, and check and make sure your back is straight. And then cleanse your mind. Then we're going to bring our hands up slowly and breathing slowly. Remember moving slowly and smoothly. Then bring your hands in front of your chest. Fingers pointing up. And then I'd like you to focus. Just let your joints gently open and relax. Then I get you to open your hands, opening up to about shoulder width. And then slowly, slowly, as though you have to gently squeeze the balloon, pushing together. Then we're going to add breathing into it. Breathing as you open your hands to shoulder width. And breathe out and gently, gently squeeze squeeze the ball together. And as you breathe in, imagine you have to pull against a magnetic force and gently pull against the resistance. And then push, gently breathe out. So keep your movement slow, breathing, smooth, and continuous and move against a gentle resistance. Then we're going to do another movement while you're sitting down. I get you to bring your hands forward and then turn your palms out. Then put one hand, doesn't matter which hand, one hand where it is and bring one hand down. And then we're going to just uh, the top hand face each other. You face me and I face you. We have a communication in energy. And the bottom hand communicate with the ground. And then we're going to bring both hands to one side. Doesn't matter which side. 
And then we're going to change those hangs. The top hang goes down. Okay, so the top hang are communicating with me, and the bottom hang are communicating with the earth. And then we're going to bring both hands over to the other side. And let's do that again. Change hands, top hand communicating with each other. And now move them gently against the resistance and keep them float, flowing. Change hands, keep the movement flow, smooth. Slow, continuous, and visualize that gentle resistance you have to move gently against. Let's bring our hands back to the front and do an open. Do a close. Let's do one more open close. Open, breathing, close, breathe out. So that's part of Tai Chi for arthritis. We do teach it to people when they're sitting down or when they're standing up. With the waving hands, we do come with moving hands. But we can also teach it to people uh, who have to sit. So next principle, I'm going from the outside to the body. Now it makes sense when your body posture is right. When you have the right posture, then your lung can breathe better. And you know the psychologists, a lot of psychologists told me that, but you can try it yourself. When people are upright, they look, they are happier. When people are sad, if you can get people just to do, change their posture, and very often, they change. They don't get so depressed anymore. And psychology says, if you're not happy, fake being happy, and soon you'll be happy. And part of that is having a better posture. And we know with the latest study on deep stabilizer muscles, it's deep in the spine and they have different function and they have different property. Essentially, they're very deep muscles that protect the spine and protect the back. And it's really interesting. Practically, anybody who has back pain have a weak stabilizer muscle. And it's like the Tai Chi theory of strengthening yourself from within, from inside. And one of the things that activate deep stabilizer muscle is keeping your posture. Once your posture is straight, you, act you activate the deep stabilizer muscle. Why is this so important? One of the studies on the stabilizer muscle look at USA, American National rowing team. You would think all their muscles would be so strong that they wouldn't have back pain, but a lot of them do. And interestingly, a lot of them have weak stabilizer muscle. And that tells me and tells the researcher that the stabilizer muscle needs a different kinds of exercise. So when you read the guides for exercising deep stabilizer muscles, posture, breathing, and pelvic floor contraction with your breathing in a way that is so subtle, just think about it is enough. Don't do big contraction, but think about it using internal contraction. That sounds like my Tai Chi manual. So posture have a lot to do with your health, and that also corresponds very well with up-to-date medical science. The other thing about your body is the weight transference. Tai Chi is all about balance. A Tai Chi for Health program needs to incorporate that awareness, that mindfulness of your weight transference. 
Once your weights transfer properly, then you maintain a good balance. And once you maintain a good balance physically, you maintain a good balance mentally. So perhaps we can do try this together. Would you like to do another move? Okay, so you can uh, come up to the side or find a space. If there's no space, we can do it sitting down. What you do when you sit down is visualize. So join me when you are. Okay, have a little shake. We're going to start just warming up. Give this a shake. Okay, we're going to just do three warm-up exercises. First, we're going to bring our feet parallel to each other. Standing upright, but not tense. And standing about shoulder width apart. Now, let's start. Hands up slowly, breathing slowly. Turn your palm as your palm Gently push towards you, and I'd like you to gently Then push your hands forward and slowly slowly bend your neck Hands up again breathing Do everything slowly smoothly push back chin back Push forward and down, neck, bend gently. For the third time, hands up, breathing, gently push your chin back, forward, down. That's the neck. Now we're going to do the next exercise, strengthening our spine. Let's start with carrying a ball. Imagine you have a big beach ball away from your body. And we're going to take the bottom hand, move it up as though the ceiling is falling down and we're going to hold it up with one hand and push down the other hand. Now you bring your hands back and change hands. Hold up the ceiling and pushing down the other hand. When you bring it back, you can bend your knees a little. And when you push, you can stand up. And one more time, carry the ball. As you stretch, visualize your spine stretching gently. One more time each side. As you stretch, visualize your spine gently stretch and back to carrying a ball. One more warm up exercise. In this exercise, we're going to take a step forward. We're going to touch down on the heel first, then put your foot down without your weight, and then shift your weight forward and gently punch forward. Come back. Same with the other side. Heel, foot, and punch the opposite fist. Come back. Step. Gentle punch. Come back. And step. Gentle punch, come back, one more time, it's interesting when you start being mindful of your steps. It trains the different sets of muscles that you don't know you have before. So let's do a move called brush knee. It's just um, we're going to start where we were 
with open and close, and it doesn't really matter if you do it the wrong side. So we do an open and a close, and the next thing is we're going to stretch one hand, let's say the right hand out, the left hand next to the elbow, and I'll turn around so you can sort of follow my right hand a little better. We do an open and a close. Then stretch the right hand out, I'll turn so you can see me better, and left hand next to the right elbow. Okay. One more time. Open, close. Right hand out, left hand next to the right elbow, and bring your left foot just a little closer. Let's do it one more time. Open, close. Gently stretch right hand out, left hand next to the right elbow. Now, I'll show me. Open, close. Stretch your right hand out, left hand next to the right elbow. Excellent. So the next step is we're going to just take a little step forward with the heel first and then we're going to bring one hand down and gently stretch the other hand. I will turn around so again you can see the right and left. And to start with, open, close. Right hand out, left hand next to the right and bring your left foot a little closer then take a little step forward and left hand down, gently stretch the right hand. Okay, we'll do that again, but I'll go sideways so you can see me a little better. Open, close. Stretch the right hand out, left hand next to the right, and bring the left foot a little closer. Then I'm going to step the left heel out, left hand down, right hand out. Okay, one more time. Open, close. Right hand out, left hand next to the right, left foot closer. Take a step and separate both hands. I can just feel behind me doing it very gently and very smoothly. Let me have a look. Open, close. Right hand out, left hand next to the right. Take a step forward and separate your hands. That looks really good. So the bottom hand is going to brush past your knee, the top hand is going to come next to your ear and push it forward as though you push somebody away. Yeah, that's good. Let's do it together. I'll turn around so we've got the same direction. Open, close. Right hand out, left hand next to the right, left foot closer. Take a step, separate your hands. Brush knee with the bottom hand, push the right hand forward. Okay, one more time, I'll just turn myself a little bit. Open, close. Right hand out, left hand next to the right, left foot closer. Step, separate your hands. Brush knee and push the right hand forward. One last time and I have, would, I have a look thing. Open, close. Right hand out, left hand next to the right. Step, separate your hands. Brush knee push the right hand forward and follow step. Show me, 
Let's do it together. I'll do mirror image to you. Open, close. Right hang out, left hang next to the right. Take a step, separate your hands. Brush knee, push the right hand forward and take a follow step. That's good. Let's do a cooling down exercise. Just a little shake first. Gently tape your knee, your thigh. I mean. Gently tape your thigh. Then just clench your fist, breathing, tense, relax, let go. Clench your fist. Take a gentle breathing and slowly, slowly hangs down, breathe out. Breathing and breathe out. One last time. Breathing and out. Have a shake. So please take a seat. I'd like you to know that you learn the commencement form, open and close, <coughs> waving hands, fair lady working in the shuttle, the closing forms, you done five of the six forms of Tai Chi for arthritis. So and you can also experience that the Tai Chi principles moving slowly, moving smoothly, weight transference, posture awareness. And the things we didn't go too much into, which take a little more time, is internal component. That is to allow your joints to open, to loosen, and your mind to be quiet. Those points come with practice and explanation. But you can see that even the warm-up exercise have the Tai Chi principles. We did the warm-up with slowly, smoothly. So our program are designed with everything into consideration. Warm-up, cool down, they all specify, they all standardize. Our training from master trainers, senior trainer, instructors, leaders are standardized. So people are teaching the same instrument, the same tool. And we also have a quality assurance that they people come back for every two years. People need to do a written test before they certify to teach. They also need to have the right qualification. So we have a standard that has been shown by studies to be safe, effective, and very easy to learn. And that is um, the example I present to you. And I hope that um, if we look at that model, and if we look at how useful is the Tai Chi principle, then perhaps we can utilize all Tai Chi studies and look at it, how much of that Tai Chi movement are consistent with Tai Chi principles and how much that we're taught so that the student understand it. And if we can use that as a measurement, then we can then make sense of all these Tai Chi studies and, and then we can extend this outcome measurement, the benefits to um, different sets, different forms of Tai Chi, provided they're consistent with Tai Chi principles. So that's what I'm suggesting that um, we, we need to have a program that's user-friendly and that's effective. And then it would be good if we 
have a common denominator to make sense of studies so that one study can apply to other studies. And we need to look at better way to measure Tai Chi study because Tai Chi has a lot more benefit than the measurement that we have now. And together, there are so many of us interested in Tai Chi, together we can bring Tai Chi in to more and more people. So it uh, doesn't matter what style, what form, what discipline you have, if we have some common denominator and if our goal is the same, to make Tai Chi accessible to more people, bring help to more people, we can work together and we can to bring it to more and more people. And, you know, it makes us happy. I met many Tai Chi authors, Tai Chi practitioners, who through teaching, they themselves feel better and enjoy better health, like me. I enjoy the teaching and it really helped me, helped my health and it gave me a lot of fulfillment. So thank you for listening. This is one of the, workshop, one of the public talks I did. There, there was, this auditorium supposed to take 200 people and 500 people wants to come. And this is uh, what I do in my spare time. <laughs> My way of thank you for listening, thank you for participating.